Hello, everybody. We got a exciting new resource for all of y'all. So as you guys know, Potluck is a composable and decentralized public goods funding and impact tracking stack. And this means anyone can deploy their own quadratic funding round, a new funding strategy we recently just deployed. And all those instructions for how to do that on a technical level, like deploying a pod applications, all those tutorials were made at potluck.org slash chef dash training or on our documentation right here. But as you guys know, with any on-chain thing, there's off-chain coordination. And just like running your own grants to your own hackathons, there is, you need to plan, you need to get sponsors, you need to have a run a show with your team. And even after everything is done, after the hackathon submission or after the payouts in this case, you still need to engage the participants in the project. You still need to make sure they're getting updates and they're continuing to scale because why did you do the round in the first place other than supporting projects and making sure that they grow? We're building positive sum systems here. So this resource is to help you learn how to plan a pot, uh, some exercises associated with that, also some pitch templates, some sponsorship templates, and, um, and just best practices that we're learning. It's a living document. Um, but first, we're going to run through this exercise. And we recommend before you run around, you spend at least two months before the actual matching happens. So there's, you know, the off-chain stuff, the deployment of the pot, the application period, and the matching. Right? We, we From the actual, when people are donating and they're verifying as humans, like this actual planning period, give yourself a two-month leeway or you'll be rushing it. And we highly recommend that. But first, we're going to have this brainstorming exercise. So if you go to potluck.org slash brainstorm pot, I'll have this document. You can make a copy of it. And then I'm going to make a copy. And this is how I kind of go through my thought exercise. For this, I'm going to have Nerians. And I'll, I'll tell you what that what, what that is. You'll, you'll, you'll be doing this brainstorming session live with me. And so a lot of people may want to do a pot for a bunch of reasons. Personally, one thing that I really want to do is make a pot for citizens in the near ecosystem because they won't get compensated. And so one of the impacts I want to make is that like, like if you are a general purpose person in the near ecosystem supporting multiple projects and being helpful, you get opportunities and incentives. Like one of the main reasons I want to do this is I want to create a culture where individuals can get rewarded, not just projects, not just public goods. And I actually want to make a first use case where we're not using the public goods registry. We're using maybe an individual's registry or maybe no registry, um, but that's the impact I want to make. As an individual, I want people to be just helpful in the ecosystem and get rewarded retroactively and get eligible to these quadratic funding rounds. And then... um. Who would the donors be? Like, who would actually care about, in this case, Nereans or people that are ecosystem ev evangelists? Um, and what is the best path to bringing donations in? So I, I look at it as like this. The people who are going to give for that are probably people already in the near ecosystem and probably people in their network because quadratic funding... Like it incentivizes people to basically market within their own network and get those donations. Um, they probably have a wallet or probably have access to someone who is very familiar with onboarding in the near ecosystem. And this is because the people who they're supporting, the actual projects, the people that bring in this network effect, they're they're on this list because their near evangelist. So they'll, they'll know how to onboard uh, and probably already in this community already. But say you wanted to have a round for Ukrainians or refugees, they might not know nothing about crypto or wallets. So that it, the user experience might be not good. Maybe their on-ramp isn't too good or or you don't know the available uh, like services or anything like that. Maybe uh, you know it's not localized in the right language and there may be confusion about what quadratic funding is. So these are things to take into account and then put into here. And is there a particular vertical I want to tackle? Individuals in the near ecosystem. Um, and, and this is kind of repetitive, but an impact you might want to make is I want, uh, let's say DSI, I want decentralized science to be one of the most impactful things to the pharmaceutical industry. And uh, I want to maybe tackle people who are working on actually 
helping not just just working on these but helping capital get bootstrapped and 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 this has the effect of what i believe is like funding projects that have the highest impact for my overall goal um would be i think a better example of this but for this you know i'm not just doing an example i'm actually writing this in front of you um so who would be the likely ones to fund this vertical? Um, so in the case of DeFi, it might be um, maybe traditional institutions, maybe the National Science Foundation wants to um, have an alternative to research, maybe for the Ukrainian thing, maybe nonprofits and NGOs want to get more people involved in crypto because they want them to control their assets and because the banking isn't there. Just start to think, of like, why would someone have an interest about supporting this vertical? Maybe it's because they want marketing and the projects here are a a good like a, their projects and the subsequent network are a really good uh, marketing channel for them to grow their brand and there's alignment there so there could be a lot of reasons but start to think about like this for this particular for Nerians, i mean uh the the people who would like to fund as the angels uh the near digital collective and near foundation and possible investors because it will bring hype around near and do I have their contact? Yes, I have contact, but I need to organize it uh, into a CRM. And ultimately, like getting sponsors, as you guys know, it's like it's like sales. So you want to be very organized about how you do this. Right now, I don't have like a, a CRM and type of thing right now. I'll make that available later. Are there projects already in this ecosystem? And so th what this is meaning is are people who are going to apply already on Potluck? Uh, for example, for near retroactive builders, like there's a lot of open source projects already on near, so we don't have to do a like a tremendous job of having you know people make a profile, get a wallet, lot of, they can just easy apply like LinkedIn, one click apply. But are these projects already in the ecosystem? Yes, they have accounts. Okay, now it's like who do we have in our community that can help us run around? There are different people. There are like their owners who is deploying it in this case the person who's really plans things is the owner they're, they're the one ultimately responsible um and who can kind of set the settings set the tone we're like literally planning it right now and then also uh they can get in agreements with sponsors and then sign it so that they can fund the contracts or they might even even administer the funds themselves so it's important to think okay you're the owner but there's a chef too and there are additional admins admins can do anything an owner can do except uh, you know, delete other admins. And the chef is actually incentive aligned and they're going to be doing a lot of the work of outreach and, uh, you know, accepting or rejecting applications. So this is starting to think like, okay, who here can actually play this on-chain role? But there also might be supporters who could leverage KOLs in marketing. They, 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 there might be, uh, you know, people who work on the graphics. Like you, just because there are only a few roles on-chain doesn't mean that you as a team or people that could help you um, that are not only already invested in, in your particular vertical, but just want to help the cause, um, I, I would start keeping that in mind. So who, who would run this? I think like near foundation, they have an ecosystem relations person. NDC has champions and they want to see people get rewarded. Um, and uh, yeah, marketing DAO has support for people and projects in the ecosystem, many may have overlap with who they fund and they want ha happy customers. So this is just beginning to think like, okay, who can help me out? Um, and then what are your marketing assets and deliverables? So this is like, okay, like, like what I have a Twitter with 1 million followers, a Telegram channel with 300 members and email list with 20% open rate and 300 subscribers. So yeah, that's that would be an example of, of that. Just kind of understanding like what is your current reach? Uh, because uh, like, honestly, like quadratic funding is a marketing thing. It is bringing more donors in. It is a concerted effort to get people hyped and incentivized that there's a pool and their donations can get amplified. Um, but that is a very motivated by your network. So this is very important, understanding where you are as a marketing asset, who can help you, uh, because this is instrumental when the matching round starts. And even 
fielding applications if they're not already in the ecosystem. And then what are the requirements for your projects? So for me, I'm like, okay, I want Nereans who like to get rewarded for their work. I don't want just any people coming in and be like, I like Nier because Nier is cool and give me money because I'm going to continue to talk about Nier. I want people who have been like putting in work for one year, not just a professional shill, but mostly on Nier ecosystem. Um, Doesn't have to be a project can be individual. And so this this goes to the, the thing of like, we're adding something called list where not just our public goods registry, like again, this is a funding stack, so it can apply to non-public goods as well. So you can make a list of private corporations and, and you can even make it no registry. You just let accounts apply and then you review it there. Or you could have this whole registry where there is like an explore page and then that's a requirement to apply. But this is kind of thinking like that, okay? What is that requirement? Am I enforcing it with a list or am I using this as a rubric for people to accept applications? So that's kind of the context there. In this case, I want people with one year of experience and then people without a full-time job doing this and like really doing this out of passion or have been like undercompensated, um, which is a hard thing to kind of quantify, but you could kind of tell if like someone's working or not getting a consistent job um, and based on their geographic and hourly rate, like you could tell like they're not doing well. Uh, it's, I mean, that's kind of hard to tell, but like there are people in the ecosystem I know that aren't getting compensated, but put in a lot of work. And so this is this is primarily one of the reasons why I want to do it. And I want to make sure that this market is targeted. Um, and then how many projects are, are expected to apply? Projects or people in this case, because a project is just an account. Um, and so in this case, it's for individuals. And I, I honestly want 20 people uh, because like, I also want uh, like around like, and this is kind of a backwards thinking. I kind of want like 20K and it, like what quadratic funding is, it's like a pie chart. There's 20K in there. And based on the donations, how the pie is split is different. It doesn't mean more is matched. I mean, individual donations get accounted for how that pie, it, it like it shifts the pie way more uh, for more donations for a project than bigger donations, but it still is like taking off the same plate. So the way I like to look at, at it is it's in an ideal scenario, everyone has the same amount of donations and it splits it evenly. And if that's the case, okay, if 20 people add 20, 20K, this is like a start of a program 20K is kind of hard to get to rally with these stakeholders. So I get 20 people. That's around the people I have on my short list anyway, which is another exercise later. They have 20K. That's around 1K average per person. But then it might be one person gets 2K, another person gets zero or a dollar and, and, and you know, 1999. And then it start, you start to play it there. So someone could get more out of that pie, someone could get less, but on average, I think 1K is good and it's also reasonable for the amount of people and then the projects there. Um, and that's kind of one methodology of thinking backwards to how much you, you want to raise. And then what's the ultimate OKRs and metric success? Like what are the objectives and key results or you know the KPIs or the key performance indicators that you will look at this round as a success? You're not just giving money out there, but you're aligned with your overall objectives of what you're supposed to do. And you have these numbers to, me to, to measure this. And I like to look at it like this, like if we're giving out money, which is normally what grants are, and we can get the public to also give more money, that's usually a metric for me, especially, I mean, on, on the protocol level, it's like if if in the case of, if I put out 100K and the community gave 100K as well to, to these projects, that's great. They just, I just, the community matched my money because they were hyped about the incentives. And so that is a, a measure of success for some people. It might be that more people are interested in, and, and maybe this is like an acquisition cost. There's, you want a thousand eyes to see this and get engaged. Maybe it's social media impressions. Maybe you want to be aligned with their sponsors and they're like, hey, I want a million social media impressions. Me, ultimately for this round, I wanted to make sure that the projects here feel compensated and that they're not only recognized for their work, but it gives them like eligible for more opportunities and that people are overall satisfied. This, a lot of times satisfaction is like an NPS score, um, but like generally I like to actually first think about users, like let's so say a thousand people donated 
and then the bring bring in thousand in external capital. There's some situations where you might have a soft commit, and you might say, "Hey, uh, for example, NDC says I'm gonna do this round for 10k, but I'm expecting you bring in other additional sponsors for another 10k." And so, like that might be your own uh, like metric because anyone can fund the pool. Um, you may want to actually make the pool bigger, and that might be a metric. Like I have maybe brought in, you know, the ten percent or ten ten thousand dollars in additional sponsorships. Might be that people are happy. One million social media impressions, and it's really important because everything is on chain. And we can really automate this. We'll have some automations around kind of metrics and definitely join the potluck.org slash community. We do have uh, a data guild basically working and querying and seeing how rounds perform. Uh, but if this is what you're optimizing for, it's 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 it's, po it's like very possible. It's the blockchain, all the data is there. So just kind of think in mind what your ultimate success is um, and um, and 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 what how what the metrics are to optimize it that we can reasonably track. It may be that, say a sponsor, say example, a ref finance is a DeFi round, but they ultimately want to see these users and that are donating to also swap on ref. Maybe there's incentives that they do on, on the end for people who donate, they may have gotten a higher yield, for example. And so they might be tracking and they might be your sponsors. They might be tracking, I want 20% conversion into uh, my protocol. So that could be an, another realm. It really, it really depends on what you want initially, what the sponsors that people who are giving money want, and then also uh, the satisfaction of the projects and the donors involved as well. Um, but really, really understanding what that looks like in a tangible metric you could measure is absolutely important uh, because these sponsors aren't one off. They want to see if they got that ROI and they can continue to have more and more rounds. So be cognizant of that. And then what does a successful round look like to you? Um, and I think this is a lot like the impact main, but I would say, I would say like there's certain stuff you can measure immediately and then certain stuff you can measure later. And immediately I would say like, like really like a bunch of people happy, I would say money going back into the ecosystem and then, uh, people who were about to leave the ecosystem, continue to stay. Um, something I can track later is uh the the impact that like the overall share of voice that these ecosystem evangelists had. Um, and then also how sponsors being very satisfied. Um, ultimately, like in a, in, a, in, 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 say you did a Ukraine refugee round, for example, it could be that a successful round is like, yo, this many people got educated off of crypto. They talked to these many people in the web two space. This many web two companies or phila philanthropies actually looked at blockchain as a serious tech and had inquiries about integration. They may have created a profile on potluck. Um, it, it could be that, uh, um, that they were onboarded to you know tangential platforms like endowment like it, it really it really it really is up to you it may be that uh, enough connections happen and then people actually form teams from there and that's harder to measure and that can be tracked later this is like if you do hackathons it's like a similar thing it's really hard to keep track of like the actual impact and the connections made but i would just account for that and look for that because in part of this process we do ask all the participants for a retrospective and um, yeah, it, it can be, it can be tracked and it's really important to see how to best optimize this impact. And then another question is like, do you have like the necessary funds to facilitate things cost gas? It actually costs 4.4 near to deploy your own contract because we don't have access to this. We have a factory contract that people can deploy other contracts that cost 4.4 near, um, which is like if near is seven to $8, that could be anywhere from 30 to $40. If um yeah, and near I mean I'm not saying near is gonna go up, but near near has been up to all the way to 20, near has been all the way down to like I don't know. But so it could add up. Um gas cost for verifying humans 
um, you know, project, making that profile that costs a lot. You want to, like, a general good practice is you want people to have at least one year to do things. And a lot of people, depending on your vertical, they may be onboarding to near for the first time. So you're going to need to have near. A lot of us have a bunch of near that of link drops and coupons or even in potluck.org slash community. If people want to onboard, we'll onboard them uh, and, 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 you know, be a little token fairy. But um, I would say, even seeing donations, like the worst thing is like if you have 20 projects, one project has no donations and it looks like one project's about to get uh, 5,000 out of any zero. So I would say have money to see donations, have money to uh, make sure that people are onboarded um, and then have, uh, you know, necessary funds in your wallets to uh, approve projects if you're a chef, to onboard your own chefs and also to deploy that pot. I recommend like, honestly, like probably like 30 years, just good practice. Uh, but yeah, just keep that in mind. You're going to need that to actually set up because everything we do is on chain. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. A high level before we go into the actual proposal. This is kind of how we brainstorm about the pot before we formalize it. And uh, let me just go back here and kind of show you some next steps. Before we actually do this, um, we can we can then take all this information and then turn it to a pitch and then a deck and then actual a template because a lot of proposals come in the form of templates to a lot of traditional like you know uh, governments stuff like that but if you're like not even governments like a, t a traditional grant programs but then a lot of times people they want to they want to see a deck as well so we have these resources here as well um and then afterward after they give money um making sure you have an agreement for them to sign um, whether they're funding the contracts directly or doing it uh, and kind of giving you uh, the custody there. So there are some resources there as well and also kind of resources to reach out for customization. But that's just a high level overview of how we're thinking about running around.